right. Thank God it's fantasy football season. I'm Buster Brown, and the show is called Redemption Rehab. And if you tuned in today, it's because you want to get better at one thing, and that's fantasy football. Today, we're talking about some of my top picks and some of my sleeper picks that'll help you get the job done. So let's take a look at position players, like wide receivers. So let's hit the chalkboard and check out the facts. All right, welcome back. I'm Buster Brown, the show's Redemption Rehab. Today we're talking about my top picks and some of my sleeper picks at wide receiver. They're gonna help you get the job done in 2019 draft. After you watch this video, you should check out the other videos I made on wide receivers, like wide receiver draft strategy and how to draft a wide receiver. It's one thing to have my top picks and to have some of my sleepers, but if you can't utilize those picks during a draft wisely, I'm sorry. But you're not gonna be winning a championship. So make sure you check out some of those other videos, okay? So let's head over to Fantasy Football Calculator Draft Board and check out where you should be taking some of these picks in 2019 draft. on fantasyfootballcalculator.com. What you see behind me is called a draft board. The players that I have marked in black are players that I consider my tier one wide receivers. They have them in a certain order here and for the most part I agree. And if you take any of these wide receivers, you're gonna be okay. But you should go back if you get a chance and look at one of my videos and it's called how to practice draft strategies. One of the problems people have in fantasy football when it comes to a draft, what they do that they shouldn't be doing is they take too many wide receivers, they take them too early, and they end up with too many on their team, and other position players are weak. This is a huge mistake. Don't find yourself in that category. But if you're going to take a wide receiver, these are the wide receivers I like in Tier 1. You come over here and you look at DeAndre Hopkins, He's a really good player, and if you do get a chance to get him, I would definitely concentrate on running backs. Watch my running back video and my top picks to see who I like there. But I like De DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, Devontae Adams, I don't believe he's a first rounder. I never have, but you know he has put up a couple good seasons. So if you want to take him there, that's fine. Uh, Julio Jones is a great player, not much to say, he's going to have a thousand yards and problem there is he's just not going to have a ton of touchdowns, never has, and he's always going to be on the injury report every week, which means he may or may not play. That's a tough decision with him, but I'm definitely a big fan of Michael Thomas. I like him there around pick 10. If you decide to go with him or any of the other guys around there, it's a good pick. Uh, Odell Beckham's with Cleveland this year. Baker Mayfield is definitely an accurate quarterback. I think you'll see him with double-digit touchdowns and 1,000 yards if, if he stays healthy, which he hasn't been able to do. But I do think he's a great pick. So is Tariq Hill. Juju Smith-Schuster, who is now the number one in Pittsburgh. So got to love that. Mike Evans. Look, they can't run the ball in Tampa Bay. Offensive line's basically average or below, and they don't have any running backs to excite anybody. So Mike Evans is looking at a big year. So he's one of the wide receivers you should be looking at in round two. And the last one I consider my tier one uh, wide receiver is Antonio Brown here. He's falling to the end of the second round because he's a controversial guy. I'm assuming he's playing all year, and if he does, I think Derek Carr's going to find he's got one of the top five wide receivers in the league and he's gonna put up big numbers well these are my tier one wide receivers i can see taking any of them but what you should do is see if any of the main names that i have marked here fall to you where they shouldn't have fallen and then i'd scoop them up but i'm not sure i would take more than one in the first two rounds when i come back i'll show you my tier two wide receivers and what i think about them okay here we are 
talking about our tier two wide receivers we're going to target in our draft. When you come on over here to the end of the second round, you can see Adam Thielen's here. Too rich for my blood, can't do it. Keenan Allen, too rich for my blood. He's going into the season with a small injury. I do like him, but I think Mike Williams will probably be the number one receiver at the end of this year. So it's too rich for me to take Keenan Allen there. Uh, Stefan Diggs would be your next wide receiver. I do like him, but with his in injury history uh, and him competing with balls from Allen Thielen and their tight end and their running back, just say it's too high. Not saying they're bad receivers. I'm just saying too rich for my blood. Mari Cooper, I could see taking Mari Cooper in round four, but round three can't do it. So if he does happen to be there when you pick in round four, I uh, would put Chris Godwin ahead of him. I do like Chris Godwin right here. Uh, and then I would consider taking Mari Cooper. But I have Chris Godwin uh, ahead of ahead of Mari Cooper and Stefan Diggs. And I would just saying I would probably take him before I take a lot of these guys. Going to have a big year if he stays healthy in an offense that has to pass the ball. When it comes down here to uh, Cooper Cup at the end of the fourth round, I'm telling you he's falling because he hasn't played. I think that Cooper Cup's fair values in the fifth round, I could see taking him, but you should understand that he does, is coming off a significant knee injury, and people that have had that knee injury in the past have taken about a year to recover, and usually the year after, they have a good season, but they say Cooper Cup's at the top of his game, so no, I would not take him in the fourth round, but if he slides to maybe the end of the fifth, I'm going to nail him. T.Y. Hilton here in the fifth, that's way too low from one of our premier receivers. If you get T.Y. Hilton in the fifth round, do it. Tyler Boyd right here in the fifth round, I'm suggesting you do it. No A.J. Green. They're going to be throwing the ball to their tight ends. They're going to be throwing the ball to their running backs. When A.J. Green comes back, he'll get less coverage on him, no more double teams, and he'll, he'll blossom. So Tyler Boyd is someone I have on my list, and it's a good value for him in the fifth round. And the last one I have in my tier two wide receivers is Mike Williams, right here at the end of the sixth, beginning of the sixth round. I doubt he'll be there when you draft. Most people are onto this guy. He's gonna have a big year. And if you can get Mike Williams somewhere in the fifth round, I would do it. Those are my tier two wide receivers. When we come back, we're gonna look at my tier three wide receivers and head into some of my sleepers. Okay, we're taking a look at some of our tier three wide receivers. We start here in round six with DJ Moore. Look, if Cam Newton's healthy and he can sling the ball, this is a good pick. Right here is where he's going. I'm not sure I'm taking him there in round six. I have to know that Cam Newton can throw the ball, and I don't know that before the season starts. So unfortunately, where he is now, I can't take him. Too high a pick. I got to know that Cam Newton is healthy. The next wide receiver on our list is Robbie Anderson right here. Look, this kid can play football, but with his off-the-field problems, I mean, he does have a lot. Seems like every year there's something going on, and he does catch the deep ball a lot. I think it's hit or miss with him. One week it could be 20 points. Next week it could be eight. I can't take him. It's too early for round six. Don't do it. D.D. Westbrook, this is a little too early for D.D. Westbrook. If D.D. Westbrook falls somewhere at the end of round seven, maybe the beginning of round eight, he scored a touchdown last week in a preseason game. That's why he's up this high. I do like him. A little bit too rich for my blood. Can't take him in round six. Next wide receiver on the list is Allen Robinson right here. Look, this kid can play ball. He's coming off a knee injury two years ago. Last year at the end of the season, he started coming on. He had the same injury similar to Cooper Cup, and he's back. This is about where he should be going. I would not reach for him before this, but I can safely suggest, I think you'll have a good season with Allen Robinson if you can get him somewhere in round seven. The next wide receiver we're looking at is Curtis Samuel. Hey man, this kid can play ball. It comes back to whether Cam Newton can fling the ball or not. He came out of Ohio State and he was one of their better players. If you could get Curtis Samuel in round eight, I'm gonna tell you what, he's going here at the end of round seven. I'd, I'd jump on him. He's probably gonna have a good year if the quarterback's healthy. And the wide receiver next to him is Emmanuel Sanders. Look, if it's Emmanuel Sanders, the guy that we've known over the last few years, 
This is really late for him. If you could get Emmanuel Sanders in round eight, that's a good bet. If he's healthy, he's coming off two major injuries, uh, one on his Achilles and he had another surgery, maybe on both ankles, I'm not sure. But you know what? In the preseason, he looked like the real deal. So if you could get Emmanuel Sanders in round seven or round eight, I'd jump all over it. If he's healthy, He's going to pay dividends for you. Geronimo Allison is one of the up and coming wide receivers in Green Bay. It's a little bit early for me, round eight. I'd rather get him in round nine. This might be a little bit early for me. I took him in the draft at the end of round nine, and I'd say wait, but he's one of the guys I think you should have on your team. One of the guys I want to mention in my tier three wide receivers is Sterling Shepard. He's on the New York Giants, and when they lost Odell Beckham Jr., I'm going to tell you what, he moved up to the number one wide receiver on that team. Him and Evan Ingram and Saquon Barkley are going to lead this team to some, some wins, some losses, but you know what? Those are the main three, and I would definitely be all over Sterling in round eight or even better round nine, but I'd be looking at him. And the last guy I want to mention is over here is James Washington. They have him going in round 10, and that's where I took him in a draft. But I'm gonna tell you what, if I could have this guy on all my teams, I'm doing it. I got him at the end of round 10, so I wouldn't reach for him, but if you could get him maybe at the end of round nine, beginning of round 10, or even later in round 10, I'd be all over James Washington, because I'm gonna tell you what, kid looks like he can ball, and he ain't gonna be in round 10 next year. Next year, he's definitely moving up this draft board. So when we come back, we're going to take a look at some of my sleeper picks that you should be targeting at wide receiver after round 10. So some of the guys I want to show you, and if they fall to after round 10, I'd be all over them. Starting with right here with Deshaun Jackson. He's going to open up the field for a lot of other people. He's probably going to have a good start to the year. And once he does, I'd be looking at trading him. Because once he opens up the field for everybody else, the other players are going to start to play better. Your Zach Ertz, your Dallas Goddard, your Miles Sanders. These people are going to benefit from having Deshaun Jackson on the team. He's going to have to have a few good games first. And I would have him as maybe my fifth or sixth wide receiver. If he falls to me after round 10, I'm taking him. But I'm not taking him in round 10. The next wide receiver after round 10 that I would be considering, which he's going in round 10 here, is Cortland Sutton. Look, when you get to this point, sometimes wide receivers fall further than they should. I'd be taking Cortland Sutton in round 11 all day. Probably won't make it there but I would be doing it. The next wide receiver on the list here is Anthony Miller from Chicago. Look, people that know football know this kid can play. Problem is coming off a major shoulder surgery. Man, if you have shoulder surgery, you realize one thing, it hurts like hell and it takes a while to recover. I'm not sure how healthy Anthony Miller is, but I'm gonna tell you what, kid can play. I would not reach for him, but if he falls to you in round, end of round 11, maybe round 12 or 13, I would get all over it. Unfortunately, I'm not sure he's healthy. Next person, one of my guys, I try to get him on every team, is Michael Gallup. If you get Michael Gallup in round 12, I would do it. If he's there, you should consider yourself lucky, man. Mark Cooper's going to get all the coverages, and this guy's going to get open. With Ezekiel Elliott running the ball, hopefully he's in camp or back on the team and not holding out. Well, then you got yourself a, a, a guy that's a sleeper that's going to have a big year, Michael Gallup. If he stays healthy, I'd have him on my team, especially in round 12. The next guy, look, Jamison Crowder I like. I'm not sure that I can recommend him because he gets hurt a lot. He's been in the league for a while with a lot of injuries, but don't be surprised if earlier you start to see him get some balls. But... Uh, this is a little bit too early for me, round 12. I do like him, but I was thinking more like rounds 14. Next guy on our list is Terrell Williams. Look, kick and play, man. Antonio Brown's going to get a lot of targets, but with the running game, Terrell Williams could be a sneaky sleeper pick, and in round 12 or 13, I'd be all over him. Next guy is Kiki Kute. Look, this guy is a player. If you can get Kiki Kute at the end of round 12, or round 13, that's a steal. I'm telling you what, he gets hurt. He gets soft tissue issues, but I'm telling you, the kick can ball. I'd be all over him, especially at the end of round 11. 
that's probably where he's probably going to go in your draft, and I'd be taking him for sure. Miko Harmon's a th round 13 guy right here. Kid's a rookie at Kansas City, and he's got special talent. But you know how it is with rookies, man. It takes them a while to figure it out. They get banged up a lot. I'm not sure I'd reach for him, but he's somebody I'd want to have on my team. The next couple players I'd want before we end this is Debo Samuels. He plays for San Francisco. Kid's got special talent. I think he's going to find it hard to break into the starting lineup in San Francisco because they have a lot of those medium players at wide receiver. Which one's going to break out? Look, Debo Samuels will not be a 14th round pick next year. So he's worth having on your team. I just don't know if he'll pan out for you on a week in and week out basis. And the last guy I want to mention to you is Adam Humphreys. I'm not sure who Marcus Mario has to throw the ball to. Actually, I am sure. And this is one of them because he's a possession receiver. Marcus Mariota likes to throw to his running backs. He likes to throw to his tight ends. And he likes to throw to his possession receivers. Where he struggles is throwing the ball downfield. He's not very accurate. So I think you can see Adam Humphreys is a player I'd want to have on my team for sure. Okay, in summary, there you have it. Go back and look at some of my videos that I've done earlier on wide receivers, like how to draft a wide receiver, or even wide receiver draft strategies. These things will give you insight that we didn't give you today and how to utilize our top picks and some of my sleepers for fantasy football in 2019. I'm Buster Brown, the show's Redemption Rehab. Good luck.